Hello everyone. My name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about the OpenAI Whisper model which uses web scale supervised pretraining for speech recognition. Let's get started. What is Whisper? Uh, speech recognition systems pretrained in a supervised fashion have been shown to provide very good robustness, meaning uh, uh, if they are actually trained on uh, a particular data set, well, they work really nicely even on other data sets. Accordingly, Whisper is a transformer based speech recognition model trained simply to predict large amounts of transcripts of audios on the Internet. So it's a speech recognition model in that sense. Right? It uses 680,000 hours of weak multilingual and multitask supervision. So uh, supervision here is basically a speech segment uh, associated with text segment, right? And um, uh, it basically has multilingual as well as multitask supervision. 680,000 hours. Of that, 117,000 hours cover 96 other languages other than English, of course. 125,000 hours contain English, uh, contain some other language to English translation data. So the audio is in some other language and then the transcription is basically in English. Okay. Um, uh, Whisper has been shown to work really well in zero shot manner without any need of fine tuning on label data. Uh, Whisper family actually comprises of five different models um, with the 39, the smallest one being 39 million parameters, largest one being about 1.5 uh, giga parameters. Right? Uh, Whisper has been shown to be uh, uh, giving very awesome results, even in a zero, so zero shot fashion on these various tasks, uh, speech recognition, speech translation, language identification, and voice activity detection. We'll talk about these in detail in this video. If you try, if you want to try out Whisper models, they are available right there. So, how was the data pre-processed before you actually train Whisper? So, remember, Whisper has been trained on weakly supervised multilingual and multitask data. So, how is this data pre-processed? Of course, if you get anything from the internet, you need to do lots of pre-processing. And here are some steps that uh, folks at OpenAI essentially used to uh, pre-process data used for training for Whisper. Um, well, what is the data? Data is basically audio paired with transcripts on the Internet. Uh, thus, it contains audio from uh, different settings like different environments, recording setups, speakers and languages. They have removed auto generated transcripts. Uh, you can call it transcriptees, right? Um, because, well, you don't want to include synthetic data. You want to really get as much as uh, human data, manual data as possible. So they removed transcriptees and the way they did that by is by depending on these intuitions. Uh, ASR systems typically uh, they normalize away aspects that are difficult to predict only from audio signals. For example, ASR produced text typically does not contain complex punctuation like exclamation marks, commas, or question marks. Also, uh, they format white spaces such as paragraphs, or you know, the formatting differs, uh, or stylish stylistic aspects such as capitalization differ. So something is all in caps or something is all in lowercase. Typically, it it is highly likely that it, that some automated ASR system has created that, and they remove those things. They use a uh, use an use an audio detection uh, language uh, audio language detector um, using a, a data set called as Voxlingua 107, uh, and then you by doing this detection they ensure that the spoken language matches the language of the transcript uh, unless they are actually um, gathering the other part of the data where the transcript language is English and uh, the other language is one of the languages one of the remaining languages that they care for right then they add it. Uh, to the speech translation data set from other languages to English. They also dedupe things by removing transcripts which are very similar. They break audio files into 30 second segments and they train on all audio, including segments where there is no speech at all. Um, and they use it for training the voice activity detection task. Uh, manually, they also remove bad data sources. Some data sources just supply on the internet, of course, all kinds of data sources they supply really bad data. Uh, they manually remove such bad data sources as well. So now that you have this multilingual uh, pre-trained uh, pre-training data available, 680,000 hours, remember, what is the model, model architecture for Whisper? How do you basically train Whisper model? So Whisper is basically a transformer model. As you see, it has an encoder and the decoder, the typical transformer encoder, uh, just like the typical transformer encoder. It also has self-attention and feed-forward layers, and transformer decoder has self-attention, cross-attention, cross and feed-forward layers. Um, the audio which is input to this model is resampled uh, to 16 kilohertz and uh, an 80 channel log magnitude mill spectrogram representation is uh, computed on 25 millisecond windows at a stride of 10 millisecond. Okay? 
So if you have a large, uh, you know, 30 second clip, right? You basically every 10 millisecond, uh, you're striding a window of 25 millisecond each. And for that window, you compute a log mail spectrogram uh, with 80 channels and essentially just pass it in, uh, on as input uh, to this model. So, well, it's not passed on as input directly to the transformer. There is a stem, uh, so there's an encoder in between, uh, which is a two commercial uh, layer encoder with a filter width of three. Uh, and uh, of course, a con 1D, so filter width of three um, and uh, with GALU activation. Uh, second convolution layer has a stride of two, right? So that's that. Um, so once you get the uh, output from this encoder, you actually add sinusoidal position encoding and then feed it to the transformers encoder layers. Um, um, on the uh, decoder side, where you use uh, learned position encodings, and uh, then your vocabulary encodings are sort of shared, uh, uh, sort of, sort of. Uh, so the input-output token representations are sort of shared. Okay. Uh, BPE tokenizer is used, so the vocabulary size is the same as BPE vocabulary, uh, but uh, as 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 the BPE vocabulary of GPT-2. However, GPT-2 BPE vocabulary is just English only. They have uh, they have multiple languages. So now, how does the input look like? So this is the how the model looks like. How does the input look like? So the input that is passed to the to the model here, right? So how are multiple tasks encoded into the same pre-training as a pre-training architecture? Okay. Um, so uh, Whisper does multi-task pre-training and multilingual pre-training, of course. So uh, as part of multi-task pre-training, they actually have several tasks like multilingual speech recognition, speech translation, spoken language identification, and voice activity detection. Right? Uh, voice activity detection essentially means uh, you know um, just detect whether there is a speech or not in this particular audio. So musical uh, tunes basically have no speech, so it detects uh, no, there's no speech versus there is speech, so on. So um, the way this multitask uh, uh, input is provided, uh, this is the format in which this task input is provided. Okay. So uh, typically you would imagine that the first token should be start of transcript, you know, start of transcript, but then there is uh, some part before that as well. Okay. So with some probability, uh, we add the transcript text uh, preceding the current audio segment to the decoder's context. So the idea is that, hey, can I predict better if I have the context of what was spoken earlier? Or what was yeah? What was the text uh, of, of what was spoken earlier? Right. So therefore, you you also add the transcript text preceding the current audio segment to the decoder's context. So this is how it is added. So you know you have a special token called prev. All the orange tokens are special tokens, and then you also have previous text tokens which have been uh, specifically added before you even begin uh, begin the process. Right. So start of trans transcript. Okay. Um, then you actually run a, a language uh, uh, detector. So as to detect uh, the spoken language, and uh, one of the 99 languages, uh, the code for that is basically added as the next token. So the language tag is added here. However, uh, in the case of voice activity detection, there is no language, and therefore you just add a special no speech tag. After that, depending on the task, you either add a transcribe tag or a translate tag. So in this particular case, for example, transcribe tag is added, but if the languages are different, you of course add uh, you know translate tag. Uh, now, post that, um, if there are timestamps associated with the speech segment, there is alignment, then you would essentially pass on uh, text tokens associated with uh, every 20 millisecond interval. So there's a begin time, there's an end time, and typically these are quantized to nearest 20 millisecond. And then you pass on uh, text tokens, uh, which represent the subtitle text in some ways for this particular speech segment. Uh, from this begin time to end time, and of course there are several begin time to end time segments, uh, such uh, small little uh, uh, sub segments in in that sense is um, until the last one. The last one may not be complete, in which case you may just have a begin time segment and then the text tokens, and then there is no end time if it is not not a complete a complete sub segment towards the end. Finally, of course, uh, um, you know, of course, if there is no speech, then clearly you take this path where you just end the entire input with uh, an EOT, end of transcript kind of a token, special token. Okay. Now, uh, clearly in the decoder side, these uh, uh, outputs are shifted. So, and, and shifted outputs are actually passed on with learned position encodings uh, as, as input. So that's a whisper model architecture and uh, the way it is trained. Uh, let's talk about how does it perform? How does it perform on English speech recognition? So. Um, English speech recognition, Libre speech, Libre speech is a very, very popular benchmark data set for English speech recognition. Right? So the, what this plot shows is uh, um, on the x-axis word error rate on Libre speech uh, dev, 
uh, clean data set. So that's that. So smaller the better, clearly, right? On the y-axis, what you see is average word error rate on three other data sets. So the idea here is to test for robustness. So the point is that, hey, if your word error rate was really low on Libri speech, then your word error rate should basically ideally be the same on other data sets as well. So the dotted line is the ideal one, right? Uh, what this plot further shows is the human uh, human results. Essentially, as you see, um, uh, humans basically perform word error rate of 3% uh, um, on Libri speech, but then they have like about word error rate of about 15% on other data sets on average. Okay. Um, and then further, what you see is the best of those models, right? Supervised learning uh, is, uh, models, which are not zero shot. Remember, Whisper is used in a zero shot fashion, at least in this work. Yeah. So, but if you take those supervised Libri speech models, you observe that they are really good because they give you about 1.5% word error rate. However, uh, on other data sets, they are actually twice as worse, uh, you know, compared to the human performance. So, you know, they give you the best Libri speech model gives you like about 25% word error rate on these other three interesting data sets. Now that's bad, right? So they are not robust enough. However, if you look at uh, Whisper model, essentially it uh, strikes a pretty good trade off uh, in some ways, uh, basically giving a, a low uh, word error rate on both Libri speech as well as those other data sets. Um, your best zero shot Whisper model, in fact, has a relatively unremarkable uh, Libri speech clean, uh, clean test, uh, uh, you know, word error rate of 2.5, but actually has very good robustness. It performs really well on other data sets as well. Okay. Um, now, the smallest 39 million zero shot uh, uh, whisper model with the 6.7 word error rate on Libri speech. So it's not great, right? 6.7 word error rate is very high, is uh, equivalent, by the way, to the best uh, supervised Libri speech model on other data sets. So it is really bad, in, you know, if you think of it, um, you know, on, on, um, on uh, um, uh, Libri speech, but then, hey, you know, that kind of a model is as good on other data sets as, as uh, the best supervised Libri speech model. Um, so zero shot. Uh, so you know uh, here are more details. So they actually performed this robustness check against other data sets as well. And what uh, you know they compared Whisper with uh, uh, wave to vec which is one of those awesome uh, supervised uh, Libri speech models. Uh, and they observed that uh, uh, zero shot Whisper actually makes 55.2 percent less errors than the wave to vec 2.0 model. Now, how does it perform on other languages? Uh, speech recognition, multilingual speech recognition, right? So what you observe here is that. Uh, uh, in this table, they actually evaluated on two different data sets, MLS and uh, so, which is multilingual Libri speech and Vox Populi. So you observe that Zero Shot Whisper actually uh, establishes a new state of the art for MLS. However, on Vox Populi, it is not as uh, as as great compared to the best uh, supervised uh, learning baseline that exists. Okay. Um, so uh, this, uh, you know, the underperformance of Whisper here uh, could be because uh, the Vox Populi data set actually has a very large training set. So uh, master model, of course, uh, exploited the training set so as to be become so as to become much better compared to the zero shot Whisper. Um, now, uh, uh, Fleur's, uh, Fleur's data set basically has 75 different languages for uh, speech uh, uh, speech recognition. And on that data set, for each of those languages, uh, this plot basically shows, uh, you know, how does the word error rate vary? Uh, with respect to the amount of transcribed data available for that particular language, yeah. So what you observe is that if a particular data set uh, had, uh, if a particular language had a lot of pre-training data uh, when training Whisper, you observe that typically the word error rate is lower. Okay. So um, in fact, what is observed is that this particular um, curve actually, or this particular uh, uh, plot actually has an R square of 0.83, uh, basically log of word error rate versus log of the amount of training data per language has a has a R square of a co correlation of 0.83. Okay. In fact, uh, it is heartening to observe that uh, the word error rate actually halves for every 16x increase in training data. Okay. So. Um, in some ways, it also denotes how difficult it is to actually get a uh, uh, better word error rate. Uh, it it requires you 16x uh, more training data. Um, you know, if you uh, require, if you want your word error rate to go down by half. Right? Uh, there are some outer languages, for example, Telugu or uh, uh, Hebrew, Chinese, Korean, you know, which are a little away from this uh, standard trend, and that's mainly because they have their own unique scripts, which are very different from the Indo-European languages, which were basically used to uh, pre-train uh, Whisper. How does Whisper perform on other tasks like translation, language identification, or long-form transcription? Okay. 
So if you look at translation, translation basically meaning, uh, you know, audio is in other languages and uh, uh, text is in English. You observe uh, that Whisper actually does really well for low resource languages and middle resource languages, but it is not the best when you compare it with the high resource languages. Of course, uh, remember that we are comparing it with uh, uh, supervised fine tuned models compared to zero shot Whisper. Okay? So overall, actually, in fact, zero shot Whisper uh, uh, gives you really good scores compared to all other models. Note that this is not the word I read. This is effectively uh, blue, blue score, right? Because you're doing translation, so there's blue score. Okay? However, the correlation uh, of, with respect to hours of translated audio uh, or the amount of labor, uh, amount of training data that you have uh, does not really hold that well when you think about translation tasks. As you see, the correlation coefficient is pretty poor here. Um, so basically saying, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this kind of a correlation, although it holds really nicely for speech, uh, speech recognition, um, it does not really seem to be holding for uh, speech translation. Um, looking and uh, looking at language identification, well, zero shot whisper is actually not that great compared to uh, the other established uh, um, uh, supervised learning methods on language identification. However, note that whisper is at a big disadvantage here because whispers pre-training data actually did not have 20 out of those 102 languages which are there in the first data set for which the language identification has been has been uh, evaluated right so that's that uh, if you look at long transcripts meaning uh, uh, or, or uh, uh, long form transcription where the audios are very large in size uh, with input lengths ranging from a few minutes to a few hours people compared whisper with uh, several commercial systems uh, on a variety of data sets on seven long form such data sets and what you observe is that in each of them, Whisper, the blue guy, is actually performing much better compared to many other commercial, uh, commercially available uh, softwares for for doing uh, uh, for doing speech recognition. So how does the model scale? Um, so you know what happens when you uh, when you increase the size of the Whisper models uh, from 39 million to 1.5 GB, uh, 1.5 giga parameters. Well, you observe that in almost all of these cases, there are these four tasks, and you observe in all of those four tasks, essentially, uh, the word error rate decreases uh, as you scale the model size, or uh, the blue score or the you know accuracy of language identification sort of increase, right? So um, uh, interestingly, um, uh, except for the English speech recognition, so if you look at English speech recognition task, well, the curve flattens out somewhat, but otherwise everywhere else, you know, if you increase uh, increase the um, uh, size of the data set, uh, size of the model, size of the models, it helps. Now about data set, well, the overall data set actually has about uh, 680,000 or uh, 681,000 hours of uh, data. However, they also experiment by doing data set scaling. So using 0.5% of data, 1%, 2%, 4%, 8%, and so on. And then they observed how does the uh, word error rate vary. And what you observe is that, of course, as you increase the amount of retraining data, your word error rate keeps on reducing. Uh, and uh, your blue score for the translation part actually keeps on increasing, which is good. However, interesting thing to notice is that uh, um, from here to here, right, essentially from 8% of the data set to the full data set, 12.5x uh, increase in the data set size, basically, basically, you know, results only in one point drop in word, word error rate for English uh, speech recognition. So that that's how difficult English speech recognition is. Yeah. The third scaling experiment that they do is about task scaling. So remember, they were doing multilingual, multitask, uh, you know, pre-training. So what happens if you basically just have English only rather than multilingual and multitask, right? So what do you observe? So this chart basically shows you compute power being used versus the average word error rate on 11 speech recognition data sets. So what you observe is that for small models, which are trained with moderate amounts of compute power, very small amount of compute power, um, multitask and multilinguality hurts, as you see. So English only basically has a lower uh, WER, right? However, uh, in the regime where you basically are experimenting with large models and with large compute power pre-training, you see that uh, typically the uh, you know um, the the multilingual and multitask models actually have much lower WER. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for this video. Let me summarize quickly. So Whisper is a, a transformer-based speech recognition model trained simply to predict large amounts of transcripts of audio on the internet. They have uh, very carefully uh, pre-processed the data to remove bad quality data. Six eighty thousand hours of weak multilingual and multitask supervision. And the Whisper model has been shown to provide great results for speech recognition, speech translation, language identification, and voice activity detection. If you want to try Whisper models, they're available here. Thank you for watching. Hope you like the video. Uh, connect with me on my LinkedIn here, or visit, uh, look at my research on my homepage there.